Hi there, and welcome to the 46th edition of Octoprint on Air. I'm your host, Gina Heuske. And uh, yeah, welcome. Uh, glad for uh, about everyone who could make it today and also for everyone who is watching this later, the recording. Um, let me quickly go over the short outline of what we're going to talk about today. First of all, as always, I will be telling you what I've been up to since the last one of these. Uh, then I will tell you what the next steps are going to be. Then we'll have a this time really, really quick look at the stats because frankly, there is not that much interesting stuff to see this time around. And uh, after that, we'll have a short Q&A segment for which I actually have one question that was in the backlog prepared. Uh, but uh, I'll also keep an eye on the live chat for those uh, of you watching this live right now and not in the shape of a recording uh, to drop in any questions that you might have uh, that suddenly come up. Maybe about what I'm about to present to you as well. So, okay, so what I have been up to. Um, as mentioned last time, uh, I... Uh, I, I had this issue <laughs> where I was very, very, very close to a burn down, a uh, burn, burn down, right, a burn down, a burn out. And I uh, said that I would go and make some changes around, all around Octoprint and that I would especially take um, a lot of time in the future to, to push into the docs and, and make sure that the documentation is uh, turns into a full knowledge dump of everything that is in here about Octoprint, basically, and uh, also get some love in general. And um, the first step to this, this is actually what I uh, have been working on uh, a lot since the last time, which is uh, um, working on, on migrating Octoprint's docs to uh, Mac, Mac docs or Make docs, MK docs, however you want to pronounce it. Um, so the thing is that Octoprint's documentation that you lives under docs.octoprint.org so far was, was made in Sings and Sings use, uses restructured text. And, while restructured text is a very, very powerful, um, how do you say, markup language, um, it frankly is a bit of of a, of, a, of a nightmare to use, at least for for writing a lot of prose. And uh, that is why I figured being very, very familiar and very uh, naturally um, drawn to markdown, uh, it would be nice to be able to do that. Uh, to do all the documenting in, in Markdown instead. And so I, I looked into options whether I could do that with things. And while there are some, there is also this new um, uh, this new documentation tool called uh, MKDocs on the market. And that is actually what I want to use because uh, it just, uh, I don't know, it's, it clicks better with me than things. It's far easier, at least on first look and on first experiment so far to uh, to tailor to what I wanted to do and, and also to write ex and write extensions to write plugins and such. So this is what Octoprint is going to use in the future. And uh, I'm currently laying the groundworks for that, basically. And I thought instead of just talking about that, I would actually show you where we are at, what uh, stuff is going to look like in the future, and also, um, yeah, some some things that I've discovered during that. So let me quickly switch you over to the screen, uh, to the screen, right? Yeah. Okay. It's been a long week <laughs> to the screen. And so this is the new Octoprint documentation, or this is roughly how it's going to look like. There is not a lot of content yet here, so don't get your hopes up yet. But um, if you want to take a look yourself, you can do so at uh, HTTPS slash docs. This is obviously not going to be the final place for them. They are going to live under docs.octoprint.org long term. But for now, in order to be able to give the public something to play around with already, I decided to just push them onto GitHub pages and um, make them available that way. Okay, so uh, I'm using Material MK Docs here. Uh, that also has the uh, the additional benefit that it's or uh, is already fully mobile uh, responsive as well. So that that documentation page works in your on your phone as well as it does in your regular browser. And uh, all of this stuff here is now backed by Markdown pages. That was fairly easy to do. Um, I have not yet added a ton of or migrated a ton of content, but I started on some things and you see how the formatting, in my opinion, is a bit more, I don't know, readable is maybe the word that I'm looking for. Of course, this all depends on the, th on the theme and I might also have been able to do that with things, but frankly, this is way more fun. So um, here we are. Uh, this is how, how the um, 
yeah, how the save mode documentation will look like. And uh, what you also see is that here in the top bar, I have several guides now. Uh, there will be, uh, so the idea will be that home will be like the basic setup guide, just the regular GIS. The user guide will be stuff like how to configure it, what features does it have, but also, and this is something where I will need help from the community, something like a manual. I would really like to have something like a manual there. And currently Octoprint does not have something like this. And the problem is that I personally think that I'm not the most qualified to write it because I have a way too technical point of view. So I'm obviously also a user of Octoprint, but since I am the main dev, uh, I might get lost in details that interest no one. And in the meantime, also ignore very important minor stuff that is just something where I assume everyone knows it, but people don't know it actually. So this is something where I really would love uh, some hands being raised in the community that say, yeah, I'm going to write a manual for you. And uh, you will be able to do it in Markdown in the future. So maybe that is something that is going to motivate you. Um, and there will also be the plugin development guide, which currently I'm, I'm currently in the process of migrating the mix-in documentation because uh, the mix-in uh, documentation lives inside the code of Octoprint itself. So I've also created a dedicated uh, branch in, Doctoprint, in Octoprint off of the maintenance branch where I'm switching over all the all the uh, docs in the code that are in doc strings and in uh, restructured text, so what syncs uses format, over to Markdown. There are still some leftovers. So for example, here you see a leftover that is still restructured text and then and, and here as well. So that is just some some work that needs to be done. The core development guide will be where probably most of the newly added content by me will land because this is going to be where is what in Octoprint's core and how, what do I need to touch in order to change stuff, stuff like this. Also things like how do I set up a development environment and how does the release process work. Things like this are going to live here. And the code reference is uh, auto-generated. And that is uh, currently only auto-generated from the Python stuff. I'm also looking into how I can maybe achieve the same thing for the for the client side things, the JavaScript stuff. Um, and uh, that is pretty much just the tool going through all of Octoprint's classes and extracting all the documentation that is, that is there in in that and. Yeah, so just like with the plugin docs, uh, most of that will still be documented in, as you can hear, as you can see here in um, in uh, in, in um, restructured text, for example, here and here, and all of that needs to be migrated. Um, so the advantages of doing all of that here is that I can write everything in Markdown, which is way faster for me. Uh, and I think also for most people, because Markdown is pretty much omnipresent everywhere these days, uh, especially in, 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 in the development world on GitHub, uh, you use Markdown for comments, you use Markdown for, for the readme files and stuff. Uh, you use it on stuff like Discord supports Markdown. So Markdown is like the lingua franca, I would say, of the, call it documentation languages, maybe. <laughs> Um, so I really appreciate that I can now do all of this in that. Um, and the tooling is more modern and easier to write extensions for as well. So that is something that is going to speed up things. And in fact, it already did so. And I'm going to show you why, uh, what in a minute, but I also do not want to gloss over the disadvantages of all this. Obviously I have to do a, a ton of migration work first and, uh, going through the code and turning everything that is currently three structure text into a markdown. But um, frankly, while that is admittedly a bit of a mindless task, it is a nice change from the usual work and frankly, something that right now I really, really can use because that is just, I, mean, I don't know, it's relaxing. I put up, some, put up some good music and then I just go through the class files and convert. So that is really nice. And the fun side effect of this documentation work is something that I'm going to show you now. And that is on first look, not very spectacular because this is just the documentation of the config settings, but all of this is now being generated from code because I migrated. And that is also something that is already in Octoprint's maintenance branch and will already work, uh, run in one nine, uh, depend, no matter how far I will be with the docs then. 
Um, the settings are now all migrated to something called Pydentic, and Pydentic is a class, uh, is a library in Python uh, for Python and for Python 3 only, which is one of the neat things that I now got to get to play with that uh, Octoprint has been turned Python 3 only, um, which um, yeah allows uh, basically typing of data structures and also validation of the data structures. And currently we only, I'm only making use of the typing aspect here, not of the data, of the validation itself. So that is also something where long-term I want to go. And um, yeah, I wrote a little helper tool that can generate documentation like this here from um, a Pydentic model. So if, for example, this here is the data model of the, or here is the documentation for the access control section in the settings and you get your default settings here presented to you in YAML, how it looks. And then you also get a description of every single key that you see there in the order of appearance, its name, its type, string meaning, it has to be provided, optional string meaning, um, it must, uh, it, it can be provided, but it's, 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 it's optional, uh, as it says so there. And all of these are actually Python type annotations and a description which documents what this thing actually is and also if set a default value. So all of that is now living in the documentation and all of that falls out of this. So I, uh, I document, I, I, I declare the data structure that the settings will live in in this way. I add type annotations, Python 3 only. And um, and also default values like here, for example, and a doc string, a Python, a native Python doc string, and with the help of Pydentic and also a Pydentic plugin that I'm using here, and which I still might vendor because currently that's all I'm using from this specific um, library that I've pulled in as an additional dependency. From all of this. Um, or, or, or rather from these 50 or maybe only 40 lines here, all of this is generated. And that means that in the future, I will no longer have to spend a ton of time to keep all of the sync and usually fail at doing so, which so far was a source of frustration for both me and everyone that had to look up some kind of functionality in the, or kind of, kind of setting, um, in order to figure out, uh, how to how to set that and what to do with that and and so this is a, hopefully going to be a thing of the past now um and long term i also plan to use these these structures that i get here so currently i'm only taking using this to populate the default settings dictionary in octoprint and um do nothing else with this model yet uh but long term i could of course also use it to do a lot of stuff automatically that currently also has to be maintained separately. So for example, the whole settings API could just read the typing from this and validate the incoming data through that. And that is certainly something that I plan to do long-term as well, or uh, hope that someone will contribute long-term then. And, um, but for now though, this is going to be a documentation thing only, but in my humble opinion, something that is really going to improve how um, yeah, how, how especially this quiet, crucial, in my opinion, config uh, documentation is going to work. And um, as I said, I actually wrote a small expansion for that in order to be able to do this. There did exist some, uh, some, some tools already that worked and, and, and could extract Pydent stuff, uh, documentation from Pydentic into my, make, uh, MK docs, but um, it didn't work particularly well for my use case specifically, and I cannot even remember right now why. So I simply custom made something and that actually turned out to be a case of, I think the, the implementation itself took maybe two hours and then the whole migration of everything over to Pydentics so of the whole settings and writing all the documentation and all that. And frankly, I'm also still missing it in huge parts, as you can see here where the descriptions are empty. Uh, but but that then took maybe a day. So all in all, that was, uh, I think, time well, well invested so that in the future, I will only have to change one place and it automatically changes in several others. Okay. Um, so that was 
this. That was the part where I worked on the documentation. You might also remember that last time I also mentioned uh, about uh, the fact that um, I, I have a feeling that most people do not really know what uh, tasks are currently in progress and what needs to be done in Octoprint and where they can help. And frankly, also, I uh, often feel myself losing completely and utterly losing over the overview of everything. So uh, what I finally did is I created a central backlog and I used um, GitHub Projects Beta for that because that uh, allows me. So I don't know how well, uh, fam how familiar you are with GitHub Projects, but there existed an old version of GitHub projects and that is still uh, also used by some projects and, and is still in existence, still works. Um, and that basically gave you one project board that looked a bit like a Trello board maybe. And you could add issues and PRs to that board and then look at it. So GitHub uh, projects beta on the other hand now has put this concept on steroids basically because now you can add tickets and projects to a board, uh, to, to a project, but then GitHub and, uh, sorry, tickets and uh, PRs to a project. And then you can create views on this information, various views. And all of these views are the tabs that you see up here. And you can uh, show what is in there, what is in your current view as a table or as a, as a, as a, as a Kanban board, basically. So like Trello or something. And um, what I have here now is that I've, I've thrown everything well not everything but i've started to throw everything from all of the official uh, octoprint projects in there so the bundle viewer the cookie cutter template that is used for plug-in generation um also i create a new mid a, mid, a, a new meta uh, repository for stuff that is more like it doesn't fit in one thing but more is more about everything then octoprint of course and um all of the official plugins, the bundle plugins, the plugin repository. And so everything here is is open tickets that have been already added to the project. For Octoprint, there are still a ton of open tickets that have not been added because I have not yet had the time to look into automating all of this. Currently, it involves just clicking, so opening the issue and then clicking on add to project. and. That is a lot of work. So instead, I I can all of all, do all of that via GraphQL, but I have to look at how to. So that is something that I still need to do, so that we also get all the feature requests and all of that in here. Though I will probably then filter them out here and only throw them into one view in one into one dedicated view, so that the normal work here does not get too um, confusing. But yeah, okay. So what do we have here? We have a general overview that shows you. Anything that is open, be it issue or uh, pull request, and uh, not already marked as done. And uh, as you can see, that is some stuff. And then we have a status board here, which uh, does the same thing, basically, uh, but uh, shows it to you in this shape. So as a, as a, as a Kanban board, gives you a different kind of overview. We have all the issues that are currently unassigned, so no one is actually has has said I'll definitely look into that. We have everything that I have managed or that has been delegated to someone who is not me. Um, we have all the open PRs across the project, and uh, obviously also their state, the current state, and uh, if so, also a milestone and such. Who's who has the current? Also who who who's um, yeah, the current assignee or who's supposed to do something on them, uh, who has reviewed them. We have an overview of anything that is blocked. So unreproduced issues on Octoprint, for example, which I cannot make heads or tails of because I simply cannot reproduce them myself and lack the information that I need to analyze them. Uh, but also issues where I am waiting for information and where this information sadly has not yet been uh, provided and I've also added a since column here since when that has been the case since when this issue or this pull request has been blocked um, then we have a, a tab that I hope we'll see a lot of use in the future which is help wanted and there everything on from the whole Octoprint uh, project will go in where uh, which is yeah feature requests up for grabs or um, or uh, uh, yeah, something like an abandoned plugin that is looking for a new maintainer, or in general anything that 
yeah help is needed with where where contributions are welcome and 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 uh, wished for and, and and things like that and obviously there's not much on there yet because also mostly because the the features in in, in so all the features requests in octoprint are still missing and also i have not frankly have not ha have not yet have had time to uh, go through everything that is currently open on the general overview here and figure out what of this is something that uh, could be turned into something that someone not completely and utterly deeply familiar with the project can already do without the full documentation being there because I'm still working on that. Um, then there is a little bit of a magic tab here because assigned to me here means it is not necessarily assigned to me but if you open this with your github account then it will show you all the tickets and prs that are assigned to you so if you are uh, someone who has contributed to octoprint who has a pr open in octoprint or something like that if you open this you will see if action is needed on your part uh, also if you are someone who opened it in, uh, who, who reported an issue in octoprint and is wondering why is nothing happened check this maybe you na your name is on there or, or maybe you have something in here. Then uh, a bunch of Octoprint specific views. So Octoprint stuff that is open in Octoprint's core repository sorted by the milestone associated with it and also stuff that doesn't yet have a milestone. Mostly those are mostly things that are blocked. Um, bugs specifically also by milestone. Pull requests also by milestone. Things that still need triage. Um, or triage. I always forget how to uh, how to say that. Or uh, where where it's not yet clear whether this is actually a bug or more an environmental problem, and where analysis is still missing. So this is also something where people maybe can help by seeing if they can reproduce the problem and report back on how, so that it hopefully at some point can leave this state. Then. Um, This is actually supposed to look like this, <laughs> I think. Uh, and no, wait, it's not supposed to look like this, but no. Hmm. Okay, I cannot remember right now what's the difference is between this and this. At some point I will figure it out. Um, and then we also have anything that is, so this, this will always be the next maintenance release pretty much. I might also add something for, for 2.0 uh, at a later point, but this gives a nice overview over what is all left to do, what is currently being done, where are we blocked, and what is already done. So that is basically a bit of a burn down situation. Um, and yeah, then we could also add another view. So yeah, this is the Octoprint backlog, and you can uh, find that if you just go to backlog.octoprint.org because I've added a redirect there that is going to lead you right there, like right to this view, and then you can just go through here. And I hope the emojis are also clarifying a bit what everything means. Uh, I know that before I added them, I got uh, horribly lost, but now that they are there, I think that thing is way, way more usable. Okay, um, then uh, that was that. Let me see where we are. I think I, uh, yeah, I think I, I pretty much explained all of this. Yeah. Uh, so um, the plan here is you also see here, below here there are some things that do not have a repository yet, and uh, yeah, I'm going to use this whole thing as as a big public to do list. So. Uh, I've already started and I actually pull, put out a warning on Discord for the regular contributors so that they know uh, something might be up. Uh, I've already started just instead of putting stuff into my to-do list and uh, that I need to remember to do, I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm sta I've started to just open a ticket for it. And uh, so you can expect a lot more traffic on the issue tracker in the future due to that because um, my idea is really to make it more transparent of what all needs to be done and hopefully also to gather feedback on what needs to be done and maybe also find people who say, hey, I can do that. That is just going to be uh, like trivial for me. And Or maybe also I, I just had a nice discussion with Charlie on a ticket that I opened this afternoon because I, I ran into a funny problem that I could not make head or, head or tails of at first. And then I simply created an issue for that and documented it. And uh, he piped up and said, hey, uh, I had something similar uh, recently with something not Octoprint related and 
So that made me realize, okay, it's not just me. <laughs> and uh, also gave me some hints as to what to Google so I could actually find the explanation for that. So the problem is now not fully solved yet, but it's on the way. That's really nice. And that would not have happened if I had just dumped that in my to-do list and worked on in silence. So awesome teamwork. Okay. Um, yeah. So what else did I do? Um, not much, actually, because that kept me terribly busy, I have to say, all of this. Of course, also a bunch of stuff, maintenance. I reviewed some for hours and mer merged them uh, or gave feedback. I reviewed also, I think, at least one or two plugins and um, stuff. What I also did, and that was kind of fun, uh, is that this Tuesday I uh, was a, a guest on the Python Bytes podcast. And that is pretty amazing because I've been a long-term uh, listener of that a uh, couple of years now. Sorry. And uh, right after PyCon DE, I think I got uh, approached by the by one of the hosts, by Mike, uh, Michael Kennedy. And he said, hey, do you maybe want to be a, a guest on the show? And then we and I was like, oh, absolutely. And um, then it took us a while to find a good appointment. And yeah, but in the end, it happened this Tuesday it was a live stream. And you can also watch this live stream still, but you can also just go to Python Bytes FM and download the um, download the, the podcast and or throw it in your podcatcher or something if you're interested. Um, the podcast is completely unrelated to Octoprint, admittedly, but maybe if you're if you're remotely interested in Python, you might be interested. You might still want to subscribe to it, to it in general, by the way, or or be interested in this episode. Um, so consider it like a news show, maybe, where uh, the hosts and uh, the occasional guests um, share Python related links that they found uh, and uh, talk about them and talk and say why they are interesting and cool and stuff. And I shared uh, something 3D printer related as well. So maybe you want to give it give it a look or a listen. And uh, yeah, so that was exciting. OK. So um, let me quickly throw a look into the live chat if I missed something. Uh, David said that if you're using Octoprint, you're already pretty technical. I guess that was in relate relation to the uh, to the thing where I said it would be nice to have a manual. Mm, I don't know. I mean, yes, of course, but also no, not necessarily, because I see the the kind of questions that people ask on the on the community forums. And I also see often that people request things that are already there. Uh, so um, having all of this stuff documented would be really nice and uh, hopefully also reduce a bit the need to constantly tell people the same things again. Obviously not fully reduce or fully, uh, fully, fully um, remove the need because from my experience over almost a decade of maintaining this project, you can write you can write as much as you want on a certain topic and make it easily discoverable and even even link to it from the front end as well. And people will still say, "What does this mean? What do I have to do?" <laughs> like, yeah, um, example in case anything that the Pi support plugin tells you when uh, you have under voltage or uh, things like that. So, yeah, okay. Um, Next point is what are the next steps? So uh, the goal for, um, yeah, I was about to say the rest of this week, but it's actually almost the end of my week because I'm on a four day work week. Also reasons of mental health and stuff. Um, uh, but rather for the, for next week will be uh, continued work on the documentation. So my migrating all of this restructured text to, to Markdown, also ironing out any issues that I find in the meantime, where for example, um, I, um, I still have this problem where I have uh, the version edit. So in, in, in restructured text, I have a little piece of mark markup where I can say this particular thing was edited in version blah, and then it renders this as a nice string and I don't have to care about anything else. I just say version edit column 1.3.0 or something, and then that gets rendered as this was edited in version blah. And, and um, I tried to rebuild this in my in, in MK Docs, but uh, it works, but not everywhere. So I have to figure out why. So stuff like this is also something that I still tend to stumble over a bit, which is also why it's good that I have to migrate the old stuff because uh, that way I identify these um, hiccups and can add um, 
solutions for them before anyone else stumbles over that. So I guess that's an advantage. Um, also, hi, Chris. <laughs> and hi, Joe. Um, and uh, yeah, so and I said only for the next week. Why did I say only for the next week? Because next week is my last week before my vacation. And this time it's actually going to be an actual vacation and not me just, uh, you know, trying to prevent a burnout from happening. Um, so a vacation instead of an emergency break. Uh, and I'm uh, taking off three weeks to recuperate. Um, and the, for the first time since 2019, this is also going to be uh, not just a staycation, but I'm actually going to go on a trip for a couple of days. And well, not for a couple only, but yeah, for, for, for some extended time and um, spend some time on the north on the on the North Sea coast with my partner. And we also rented some e-bikes to yeah, basically um, explore the countryside and take in some sights and all of that without any gas guzzlers being involved and just enjoying the air and hopefully the sun <laughs> and also the sea and the, the sea air and everything. And I've been there once so far and it was a very, very beautiful place. So um, I'm I'm hoping that it is going to be even more awesome now because I'm going to go there with a very, very awesome person as well. And for the first time actually with this partner. So yeah, because yeah, that happens with couples that find each other at right before a global pandemic starts. Um, Okay, uh, so yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to this and the change in scenery it will involve because as much as my as I love my apartment, I like from time to time also to leave it and go somewhere else, and um, so and after over over two years now of no travel at all for me, so this this is going to be really nice. Um, and Joe asked if I'm actually going to switch off emails. Yes, so. Uh, uh, during my vacation, I put on an autoresponder on my business email account and do not look into that. Uh, it might be that if I if I know something important is going to happen, like, I don't know, uh, I, I can't think of any example right now, but <laughs> uh, then I, I might still take a look. But usually, no, usually they are off limits and... Um, I am I'm still going to be on Discord, so that is always a bit of a problem because I have to make myself not look into the Octoprint channel. And I get very angry when people uh, ping me then because of this. But uh, I, uh, yeah, if push comes to shove and something starts burning somewhere or yeah, something absolutely and and without any doubt requires my attention because otherwise stuff will just explode then there are people who know how to reach me and um those people will then also intervene so but uh, yeah so far this has never happened and i don't expect this to change now either um yeah and also Speaking of which, please do not mention me on Twitter about anything Octoprint related. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I still get this sometimes, even though I have this pinned as the very first tweet to my profile to please direct mentions that are Octoprint related and that I do not start myself, basically. So like cold calls, you could call it, to the Octoprint account and not to my, not to my personal account because... Um, Honestly, nothing ruins your after hours or your vacation or your week weekend more than someone asking you a, a question about your work that they could also just have Googled because then the first hit would have given them the answer. Um, so that is something where if you really want to make me angry, then ping me about Octoprint on Twitter uh, on my private account. That that is a surefire way to get me angry, <laughs> because yeah, even even people who know who I who I who I trust and who I have a, who I have as friends where they do that, be careful, <laughs> like um, because yeah, I mean you wouldn't like to be pinged about your work during your uh during during your off season so to speak. So it's the same for me, and for me it's also especially important because of this ongoing issue where I'm running at one hundred twenty percent all the time and. 
having issues to shut off and then running into circling the drain again. So I do not want to circle the drain any longer. I want to put this behind me. I want to make this project sustainable again. And that also means please respect my boundaries. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so that was basically four weeks accounted for. So by the time I'm back from my vacation, the next one of these will already need to be scheduled which I'm not going to do during my vacation, so it will be a bit delayed. Um, but yeah, I expect I will also do some maintenance next week as well and, uh, and, and stuff. Also, another thing that will happen just before I go on vacation is I'm going to be on another podcast because, uh, yeah, I'm also going to be on the next Talk Python podcast episode. And uh, there is, I think there is also going to be a live stream of that. Uh, the recording in any case will be on June 30th, so in a week um uh on uh, on a, on a thursday at i can't remember but um just check out if you're into this and if you want to look at this uh, we are going to talk about the um the findings of the python software foundation's latest survey so the survey results of that and uh, there's also be some other people on this call that make me already feel a strong case of imposter syndrome because I feel like I'm I'm, I'm the least important person <laughs> who's going to be in the room basically but uh, yeah so maybe that is something that interests you as well as a heads up this is going to happen next Thursday June 30th um, okay and uh, those are the next steps and we are done with this so quick look in the live chat again uh chris says he even got pinged after he is he resigned his work yeah this ah i don't know some some things like this are just make me make me angry even if they don't happen to me um thankfully with my old job that did not happen that would have been a bit weird but i will admit i did have nightmares about my old boss um calling my back then new boss before i became self-employed um and telling them, eh, hey, we desperately need her for this customer project again for half a year. Can you can you rent them out? Can can you rent her out? And they go, yeah, sure, no problem. <laughs> that would, was an absolute nightmare for me. So, a little literal absolute nightmare for me because yeah, it's happened in the past that I got body leased and uh, got stuck at a customer, which drove me crazy and this close to quitting. Um, so, I'm glad this. These times are over, but the nightmares remain. Um, okay, uh, so next on the schedule is a quick look at the stats. So I'm going to switch you over real quick again. And actually going to switch you over to this view because so that you can actually see everything. Um, okay, so this is the last seven days and you see that we have the usual number of seen unique unique instances and the usual number of total time printed. There has been some movement here in the Python version. So we see that Python 2 is on a steady decline. Hooray! Um, and I sincerely hope that at some point we might even get this down even further. But hey, we now are below 10,000 uh, Python 2 instances out there, so that is really nice. Um, also, just as a quick as a quick uh, info for Joe who uh, joined too late, I already sh sh uh, show uh, sh have shown off the the new board. Uh, uh, that was actually I think one of the first things that I showed. So uh, yeah, so that has been taken care of. Um, anyhow, uh, printed hours per version. So there is really nothing fun to see here today. It's the usual stuff, uh, the usual fluctuation, the usual peaks at points of uh, at pin in the printing times, the usual printer state. So a really quick look at the stats, basically. Maybe just for your general amusement, the uh, total spread or, or distribution of instances across the world in this little world view here. And I'm still hoping that at some point I will see a dot appear down here in Antarctica, but so far it doesn't ha hasn't happened. But at least there are two instances somewhere in Greenland, so this is already nice. And a ton of stuff is happening here, but this uh, is because the GeoIP first of all gets so the GeoIP location lookup a location lookup that I'm doing here is first of all limited to squares of a couple kilometers 
um, per side because personally I really do not want to know too closely where you are. I'm not. I'm only interested in a rough location. And I also noticed that a lot of providers apparently route to the route people from maybe pretty much all over the country to the same point in the country. So um, that makes this. That, for example, explains a lot of the hotspots in this part of Germany. And I guess that also is the reason for this hotspot here on the on this little um, bay that, whose name I do not know, which is a bit embarrassing. And yeah, sorry for that. Um, yeah. And uh, Chris asks, uh, says we need to celebrate the 1 million print hours soonish. I mean, if I now switch over to 30 days, which will probably take for a long time because this stuff will have to be queried from the back end. By the way, another task that I still need to add to the new board is migrate to something else that is not uh, uh, Elasticsearch uh, for tracking, but this is going to be a big project in itself. Um, yeah, if I did this now, it would take ages, but yeah, I mean, 773,000 hours in seven days is also a number, I'd say. And Joe says most polar research centers use VPNs from what I've seen. Yeah, this is also my my fear. Um, but yeah, there's I mean a, a girl can hope, right? Because the problem is this is the only this is the only continent I'm still missing in my collection. <laughs> so, um, yeah, at some point maybe. Maybe someone can, I don't know, put up a little a little uh, cell station down there just so that I can get my point. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. Anyhow, um, back to me. That would be that button. Yeah, and um, that were the stats. And this now brings us to the questions and I actually just realized that I could have just left you looking at my screen um yeah so uh I have two questions in the backlog uh one sorry one question in the backlog which is actually less of question and more of a suggestion by Charlie who says uh, it seems the community doesn't have many questions for you they must all be answered already that's also my impression because yeah we haven't had questions last time either and the t day before it only at uh, the time before it was only two i think um how about instead of the community asking you questions do you have questions for the community have you ever considered doing an octoprint user survey and i actually did one and that was years ago admittedly like i think in 2015 15, no, six. It was when I already had a patron, so it must have been at sixteen or seventeen, maybe. And I think it was seventeen, and it took me until eighteen to actually evaluate all of that. So uh, it was way more overhead than I, than I anticipated to actually, yeah, evaluate this survey and and figure out findings from it. And that was also the point where I decided, yeah, I'm not going to do that anytime soon again because oof. Um, the thing is that in order to figure out the stuff that I wanted to know, I had to use way more free, uh, way more freeform fields that I preferred, but I did not find any way to put this into multiple choice or something. So I had to read through a ton of text in order, so from all of the participants, and I think it was only something like 400 or so, so not even many, or 300, I can't remember. Um, yeah, and read through all of this text and try to cluster it and make sense of it. And oh, that was such a lot of work. And um, that's the reason why I haven't done this yet again. But it certainly is something that I really would love to do. Because so for one, I, I personally, I really like looking at the results of surveys when they are done. So, for example, the results of the of the of the joint survey that the PSF and JetBrains have done now with the Python community in a, the, the, I don't know how many years in a row. Um, and I also participate in them every year. Um, and and uh, yeah, so that's also what I'm going to talk about in this podcast that I mentioned in, in a week. And they are, surveys like that are very interesting and they give you a lot of insight of, about how something is used and by whom and for what purpose. 
And that is pretty amazing. So I really would love to do a survey again. But it's such a huge amount of work. And I've, I'm a software engineer. I'm not a survey designer. So call to action for the community here. If anyone here watching this now live or in the recording form or, or somehow get, gets, gets, gets their attention on this segment, um, if, if any one of you has experience in survey design and is eager to lend the project a helping hand in that regard, then please get in touch with me because I would really love to do another survey and this time of the whole community and not, not just from the, from the, uh, about the, the patrons and, and figure out stuff like uh, what people are or why people are using Octoprint. So for what purpose is, is, are they using it for hobby stuff or is it more in an educational setting or business or whatnot? Um, and uh, also a bunch of other things that I can't even think about right now. So it, I would also be interested in, in, in things that the community is interested in that could be part of a survey to figure, just figure out these things. And, um, but yeah, I, this is something where I really would like to get help. So please help. And, uh, and Joe, that might sound like something that you could help with, but you already volunteered for the dev container. So first get this done this thing before I, I, I pile up more work on, on your shoulder. Um, and, uh, yeah. So if you want to help design the next Octoprint user survey, then please get in touch with me. And I might also add a ticket for that into the meta repository right after this thing. So I don't forget. Yeah. Um, Okay, this was the quest the only question that we had on the backlog. The question that I now have for you, dear uh, viewer watching this in the live uh, uh, or watching this live right now and, and and participating in the live chat, do you have any question left that I should answer now or because otherwise I'm going to wrap things up. <laughs> um Also, ah, I just saw something uh, which was the question about the next milestone after I see, finally see a pin pop up on the in, in Antarctica. Uh, what 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 comes after that? Uh, the moon or um, or anything like that, and uh, the orbit. And then uh, Chris asked if I got an instance on the ISS, and no, I don't. Uh, as, at least not as far as I know, because tracking hasn't been enabled. I know the ISS has a 3D printer, but I think it doesn't run Octoprint. Um, if it does, if you're watching this and are in touch with NASA or are involved with NASA, then please tell me if it runs Octoprint. Um, okay. And uh, Joe, you've got a question that's a bit out there. Yeah, then I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to be optimistic and say, just ask it. Is there a feature that you're still waiting for on a 3D printer that isn't yet mass availability? Uh, yet mass avail that I, I think you mean that isn't yet widely available, right? Or something like that. Um, and I would say, yeah, closed loop. Um, because um, the the thing with with stepper motors is something gets in their way and they lose steps, right? We all know how this sounds when it happens in the extruder, and we also know how this sounds when it happens on the model. And it would really be kind of nice if that could no longer happen. And if I also did not have to home the printer on every start and after every um, after every power off or something, so, but but if that thing knew where it was, like, for example, yeah, I don't know if I move the head manually, then it would also know where it is due to an encoder or something. Um, so some closed loop, loop, closed loop systems. I know there have been some add-on steppers that supported that, but I think the firmware support isn't really there. So, uh, but that would be really neat. Um, yeah, things like this. I think that's the only thing that comes to mind right now. Because otherwise, I frankly feel not too comfortable in saying anything because I'm way too much out of the loop with regards to late, the latest general printer features because I'm concentrating on all of the software stuff mostly. <laughs> so there might be stuff where I now say, oh, it would be so nice if, and all of you go, oh, that have been, has been in all of the printers released since 2022. So, um, yeah, but closed loop would be nice. 
and my flash host just word up the fan sorry if you're hearing that because apparently it is warm for it as well as it, as it is for me yeah so i'm not seeing any any more questions so i'm going to assume you don't have any and uh, again if you want to see a survey then uh then uh then help with the survey uh, Joe says I need to put a belt printer on my wish list. Yeah, a belt printer would actually be something that I would love to have, but the problem is space. So uh, if at some point I'm I have more space, then I will definitely get myself a belt printer. But currently I am in the in the situation that I have to decide uh, what I do with the limited space, and I actually just got gifted a new printer that I still haven't put up because of this problem. So I need to. One of them that I currently set up here on the shelf needs to go, and I still haven't decided which one. Uh, but I have, I have a very likely candidate, and now I just have to figure out, or rather, have to do it. I'm taking bets whether that will happen before, or after my vacation, or maybe in my vacation. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah. Okay. So then uh, Joe says wall mount. Yeah, wall mounting means I need to have a have a free wall. And that is a bit of a problem here now. So um, I've put up shelves against every piece of wall or I have uh, power lines running through the wall or I have a height adjustable desk moving up and down against this wall. So um, yeah, won't work here anymore. This, this, this office really is bursting on it seems i mean i'm i'm taking my my i i I've, I've taken some 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 um great i'm losing words again um i'm taking some measurements no i've taken some precautions right uh so that it doesn't get too too bad and i installed this new shelving unit 2 years ago and stuff but uh yeah i i think i really, there's some stuff that i probably have in here that i don't have to have in here anymore and i would just have to sit down for a week and disassemble especially this one shelving unit but yeah no i'm not going to put put printers on the balcony chris especially not on this balcony which is currently once again just like a situation where the floor is lava and and almost quite literally so because over 30 degrees outside and no shadow at all um not good um okay last try to uh, wrap this up and i'm going to ignore the live chat for now um yeah so um hope it was interesting i showed a lot of stuff this time that isn't even yeah that there wasn't octoprint itself but it is going to factor in heavily into how it is how it gets developed over the course of the next years i hope uh so I still hope it was interesting, or maybe it was even more interesting due, due to that. I don't know. Um, and uh, yeah, so the next one of these will happen in after my vacation, uh, probably a week later or two weeks later than that, actually, because I first have to return, figure out what I have to do. That needs my immediate attention. Then, um, uh, then uh, take care of that. Then find a find an appointment and schedule that and. Then finally do it. So uh, just stay tuned on the on the Patreon five dollar and above, or on the GitHub sponsors five dollar and above per month, uh, and then you'll you'll get a notice when uh, a new appointment is scheduled, and then you can watch this live or just catch the recording afterwards. Yeah. And until then, thanks for being here. Again, hope it was interesting. And stay safe, stay healthy, and happy printing. Bye.